Welcome to the Tom Otto channel. Today we're working on a 77 International Scout II, uh, 304, 345 V8 carbureted, and the cylinder disabling has been activated, and we're gonna show you how to repair that. It's not what you think. Stay tuned. Hey, come with me and I'll show you over here on this International Scout how we found the two cylinders that were deactivated. Let's take a look at what we found. What we do is take insulated pliers, uh, one at a time, go around the cap until we see a dropper of RPM or not. Then we'll know what cylinders, because you're not gonna be doing this from the driver's seat with the scanner. This is done the old fashioned way. And what we found was two plugs that were fuel fouled so we need to uh, go right after the, the root problem, which we found, which was that we have fuel when the vehicle shot off after it's warm, is that it continues to dump fuel down the Venturis. So there's two things. We either have a float that's bad, saturated, same thing, a uh, needle and seat that's not seating, or just a uh, high float level. But what we're gonna do, we'll take part this carburetor. I've got a kit here waiting for a float, and uh, we're gonna, put a kit in this and uh, get the performance back on this International. Yeah, a little background on this 77 International. I had this car in here about a month ago uh, with no reverse and no third gear. So we took the transmission out, pulled it apart. What we found was a rear servo. The lip seal had just gone away in little pieces, almost like grains of sand. And the same with the lip seal in the uh, direct drum. Same thing, put new seals in, couple new bushings. Everything was working great. The owner had called me and, hey, Tom, this thing ain't, you know, had a little bit harder to start and park. So, you know, when everything's settled, we got it back down here. Uh, we did adjust out the uh, linkage so that it would start and park in neutral, have reverse lights. What I noticed uh, the whole thing is that he also was uh, saying it had no power. Thought maybe it was a transmission issue. Well, it's not a transmission issue. This thing was only running on six cylinders. Customer thought it was a transmission. We diagnosed it as two cylinders, so it didn't have the power. You had to go a little bit further on the throttle to get it to shift. But when time we're done with it, it'll be back to the way it should be. We just got a call from Josh Perrin from Dirk's Automotive just right down the road here. He called for an alignment. So what we're going to do is just put those uh, eight plugs in brand new. We're going to put in, get it moved over to the other side. Yeah, we'll do an alignment for Josh. He's been a good customer the last few years since we started doing alignments. So we develop a really good relationship. So we, we try to help out each other. Uh, as much as possible. Uh, not everybody has an alignment rack. I don't have everything that he may have. So we share ideas. Great guy to work with. So most of you guys out there are doing uh, tune-ups, plug wire replacement, which is recommended certain intervals. Go ahead and save your boots. They come in different lengths, probably on a lot of the different vehicles you guys are seeing. Look at the flexibility as you're, you know, plug holders, as you're putting them back into the cylinders, you know, be able to hook right in to the get it started, turn it in, you know, makes it a lot easier. Flexible, round the different things. You know how tight it is in these engine compartments. So go ahead, save these. They're very handy. They come in different lengths. You don't have to buy them. Just take them off the old plug wires. When you're removing your spark plug wires, I always number mine from the front to the back, not necessarily in the firing order, but I put marks on them. Like this one's here, I got three, there's what? There's number four. I know that goes to the fourth one back. There's three, there's two. I just know if I, when I pull them off and mark them, I put them back, I'm not gonna have to diagnose or fool around if I got them out of order. And I'll do that for each side, you know, it makes it real easy for reassembly. You know, we don't have to waste a bunch of time. Got the carburetor off the uh, International Scout. Just kind of give you an idea um, here. Oh, wow, there's a fuel as you can see. So our, haven't really tipped it very much, uh, but that's a problem that fouled our plugs was that fuel that was dripping over out of the bowl. So Pretty basic carburetor. There's nothing really to it. It's what I grew up with. 
uh, living in the Wood River Valley where we had a lot of Jeeps to catch them, Cadillacs, a uh, lot of your Fords. So, very familiar with this carburetor. Um, what we want to do, I'm just going to remove, kind of get that top out of the way and see this float. Ah, it, it feels heavy. So that could be the whole problem. Very, very heavy. Let me get my screwdriver here. I'm going to go ahead and pop out the, let me show you here. This was, this actually, this carburetor will run without the top even on it. But what I want to show you, there's a clip. Just push, probably both sides, and pull it up. I can already tell you, it sure feels like Oh yeah, that, 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 that float is saturated. Kind of what we thought, one of the things it could have been. Um, we, oh yeah, very, very heavy. I don't know how I can really demonstrate that. Probably put it in some water. It looks like with the flat tank, somebody's been trying to adjust that. Um, I've got a brass one here. I've got the nitro filled one. We'll just have to see. Uh, there it is. There's, there's our problem, why we're flooding over. I got a container full of water. What we what we found on that carburetor was a uh, saturated float. Yeah, here's the old one. You can feel how heavy it is. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. We'll try to get a close shot. But here we got the new one. We'll just do the same thing. And this one, you can see this one here sinking. This one, just like it's supposed to either float or not to float. We'll take float. Kind of what we suspected. It's saturated with fuel, made it heavy, so the needle and seat would never, you know, be seated. And it just caused the fuel to continue to uh, go down into the Venturi and cause a, a flooding every time we wanted to start, especially after sitting. But we do have a new float here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and repair that and deactivate that cylinder cancellation. Uh, this carburetor, when we pulled it off, did not have a tag number, so it was all nearly impossible to find the correct kit that would have corresponded. Uh, but we've got a great parts guys up in uh, Ketchum, Idaho. It's River Run Auto. You call them on the phone, tell them what you have, and they CMA you. And that's not Country Music Award. All right, guys, I've already put the, the new hanger on the needle and seat, a very small wire i like to use them they're a little little groove in here and it'll go on to the uh, float arm we've put the float pin in on the new float got the new clip so what we're doing we're ready to install this i'll show you how that's done go ahead and put that bring that up you just kind of catch it on the arm like that guide it in there we go. Let's make sure it moves good. Sure does. And what we need to do, we need to put that bale, I call it, that's more, the precise name is the bale on that. Sometimes a little tricky. Being stubborn, of course you're on camera and it never wants to go. There we go. And what that's going to do is hold that pin and float in. Actually, like I said earlier in the in the video, is that this carburetor can actually be run with no top on it because of that bail clip right here. So let's have a look. And it looks like our toe of the float, we need to kind of lower a bit. We're going to take a pair of needle nose. We're just going to uh, slightly turn it down. We want the... Let's see what that does. Get our needle and see. Now I'm not going to put the clip on. I just want to see. Man, that and that float is level. Uh, we're going to check to make sure that needle and seat is uh, seating. We're going to use my Sonics valve body uh, vacuum checker for uh, bore wear. We're just going to. Go ahead, you can see the needle is at zero. If you can see that on the Sonics gauge, we're gonna go ahead and just put this over, push down, and there it goes on the float. That's what I'm doing. I, all I'm doing is making a good seal on the inlet where the fuel line will go. And as I press down, there it goes.
and it even holds it too. So we found another use for the uh, Sonics uh, vacuum stand, worked just fine. So we know before we put the top on, as we put, uh, put this back in service, that uh, we know our needle seat is already is, is working. Okay guys, we're down to home stretch. We've the needle seat, our clips, uh, the gasket that we uh, needed to save uh, earlier. We're gonna go ahead and just button this thing up. We've got our little wiper on the choke arm. This is a manual choke setup. Let's just lift it up a little bit. Let's bring her down. Get everything squared, a little, little duster there. Never use power tools on this here. I need a Phillips. Where'd you go, baby? Ah, there we go. You know, do them in a crisscross pattern. Continue grabbing. You might remember that's a used gasket. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, we had no alternative. Just turn. I go around several times. Okay, how's our kind of check our linkage at that time? We'll, we'll put that back in. That's free. Okay, all right, guys, we got the cover on. We've checked our uh, manual choke linkage. Let me get over here. We can see that that well, that's working just like it should. Our accelerator pump. Let me just I'll set you down. That might be easier than to just bring the carburetor over here and watch. You know, everything's free. Free, free moving, not free. This isn't free. And you can see that. So we'll get that all adjusted out. Uh, we're ready to put it on the vehicle. There's a chance of uh, thunder showers. I have the International out uh, outside. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this Harbor Freight Bandland Witch and we're and we're just gonna pull this thing in to where we need it. If it weren't for a threat of uh, thunder showers, yeah, I just do it outside. But I need to get this car done, so we're gonna hook up. We're gonna go ahead and here's our wireless deal. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Aha, uh -huh, got the red light. See what happens. Okay, I think we better pull this one, take it out, put it in neutral. Here I just felt it tighten up and here we go. Let's pull it into the shop. Since I'm all by myself, this works great. Oh, one more thing guys. There we go. Okay guys, we're back. Uh, we're kind of running out of time. I went ahead and just went and reinstalled the carburetor on the engine. I uh, got our fuel line adjusted our manual choke so hey we're ready for the big reveal you might say let's see if that cylinder deactivation is gone let's jump in and let's see what happens i don't know let's uh turn it over that's extra gas from the other day we'll crank it just a little bit i want to give Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, we're back, let's try that again. Crank it over, what we're gonna do is, now we'll give it a few pumps, see what happens. Oh, let's pull the choke. Yep, working, probably right about there for the choke pull off. Whoa, we got, we got, we got fire, baby. So we've uh, successfully disabled that cylinder ca cancellation on this one. Uh, we'll just go ahead and let it warm up. It's hitting on all eight cylinders now. Uh, if it's a little loud, that's the way internationals are. Thanks for watching the first ever video on the Tom Auto channel. Special thanks goes out to Billy and Bert for choosing to repair their transmission and their carburetor on their 1977 International Scout 2. But I'll tell you guys, none of this is possible and you well know it takes a lot of work to film and edit without a really, really good editor, which just happened to be my son-in-law, Ben Figueredo. Uh, him and my daughter are right in the middle of doing a renovation. 
on an 87 Airstream. And you want to go check out their channel at Chasing the Wild Wonder and watch how, how that proceeds. You might have a tip for him. And they, he may have a tip for you, but go check them out. In upcoming videos, what we have repairing a 4R70W out of a 2002 Ford van has all forward gears, even in reverse. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe and ring that bell. And remember, take it to Tom Auto.